Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here on the bench is a couple of my systems. One of them, the one you see right here, is the one that I've got my African night crawlers in. I've got two batches of African night crawlers. Um, this one over here is currently 68 days of age. And the worms that I moved into this system 68 days ago used to live in a pile of finished castings which you know 68 days ago I probably could have gone straight out into the garden and used it but I chose to do something a little different which was to keep the material around for a while with the assumption that it had cocoons in it and soon to be baby worms so I uh, took that gamble by setting the material aside so here too 68 days have passed since we've had no more adults in this material theoretically obviously that's usually not the case um, so this is what I call a cocoon nursery and you know since this is assumed to be a process that only takes maybe a month I think I don't know for sure but I think you know a cocoon from an African night crawler should probably hatch within a month's time there should be babies in here um, so one thing to be done here is take care of the needs of the system with the worms in it and give them some food so it's been 12 days since they last ate and come over into this system to see if it's um, possible to proceed to the next step of trying to collect up the worms in here, the babies assuming that, you know, there are any <laughs> and maybe a couple other considerations to take into account here so I'm going to um, move one of these aside we'll get to work on this right away the system that we're beginning with is the cocoon nursery. It's really just a tub full of castings assumed to have had cocoons in it that needed time to hatch. And now that that time's been provided, the next assumption is that there's baby worms in here. And, you know, I was a little disappointed in myself. I watched the video from last time we checked in on this system. It took me five minutes. You don't, you don't get up until five minutes into the video until you really decide what's going to happen. So I'm hemming and hawing and I'm almost going down one path and then I end up backing up and taking a different route and I kind of told myself I can't do that today, you know. I, I think what happened last time was like just me superimposing what I want to have happen <laughs> onto the real world and then when things just don't seem like they're going to go that way um, then I have like the reality check and then I do what is most sensible and really has to happen or needs to happen. It's kind of nice just going through here and finding worms all over the place and some of these worms actually look pretty good in size and definitely have you know signs physical characteristics on their bodies indicating that they're probably already at that age where they can mate so sometimes I wonder if these were already baby worms cruising around in the material just were um, not part of the roundup when we collected the worms from here to launch off the new bin or or did they actually you know hatch here or or what you know I don't know I think different worms grow at different speeds and I thought that African night crawlers were pretty fast to grow sometimes I wish I actually knew the actual answer to some of these things but sometimes you've got to kind of fill in the blanks right so long story short with this system is that I steered away from setting up a migration of the worms to try to initiate the um, voluntary exit of the worms from the system by setting up a portion of the bin that's got some nice fresh bedding in it, some fresh food, some nice dampness, and I ended up pulling away from doing that. And the main reason was that I thought that I had something working against me, which was a bunch of material that was just so damp and cozy that there'd be really no reason in the first place for the worms to have any interest in trying to seek out a different place to be. And I figured if I'm still sitting there in the same situation with a bin where the material is still kind of much more damp than it needs to be then we'll, we'll just let this continue as is it's just gonna dry but maybe what we did last time was not enough last time we actually took a pretty significant step of removing the plastic coverings and leaving on only those two sheets of newspaper but it seems like that was still giving the system adequate protection from losing its moisture to evaporation uh, not to mention the fact that we've sort of left the winter months we're in spring actually summer's coming up pretty soon and as a result my heater is not running the heater is what I contribute a lot of the dry air in my house to in the winter time and the more humid 
warmer weather is rolling in and I think that also um, influences how quickly moisture in my systems is able to you know just on its own be lost to evaporation so this might require just a little bit um, more than what we did last time because it's just going to be left to continue drawing we've got the option to just leave it uncovered I guess you know but I don't know why that makes me nervous I just prefer not to take that route so I think we'll just go back to sort of like what we're doing here but do we take this really tattered one with tons of ventilation holes in it and just use that because the other one almost went edge to edge and had no holes in it no airflow I think that this might be um the key to our success to achieve dryness here so why don't we do that I'm going to um demote this piece of paper here I'm going to try to find some other commission for it <laughs> And what we'll do here is give it more time. Nothing else to be done, I think. So as much as I'd love to start the migration of the worms out of this material, I believe um, we'll have better luck with it in a little while. Once the stuff starts to dry a bit more, it starts to flow a little bit better. And then we'll, we'll give it a try. I'm not in a hurry. So let's go get the bin where the worms are and feed them. So now if we had initiated the migration of the worms of the... Um, of the cocoon nursery you know we would have set up a nice fresh set of bedding and we would have fed and I actually did come down here prepared to do that because I've got a couple days worth of coffee piled up over here <laughs> and I was really hoping that one of these would go to setting up the migration feeding zone of the cocoon nursery but I didn't want to force it you know I wanted to really go that route if it was right to do so and I think it'll be right to do so once the material in that system has had a chance to dry become a little bit more crumbly and then I think we'll have a bunch of really motivated worms that'll be happy to come on over into our nice feeding zone after we set it up for them. But this way, you know, I don't, I don't think it would work too well and it would just become frustrating because it will become another waiting game that seems like it's got opposition or, you know, variables in the mix that are sort of working against it. So the last feeding, I took a look at the video, um, cantaloupe, some cabbage leaves, coffee. <laughs> obviously there was something else I can't remember what it was now maybe it'll occur to me and it was fed right down the middle that's what that coffee filter that you saw out in the middle here uh, draped over the middle was indicating to us where we last fed I got some other systems where I'm kind of moving the, the feedings around and flip-flopping back and forth and so sometimes that indicator is not in the middle sometimes it's showing me where the feeding is elsewhere but a lot of times in my systems, it's easy to assume that the feeding is going to be in the middle. That's my kind of basic approach, usually. This big guy is really kind of stealing the show, but there's little ones over here next to him, too. I think that's just one pretty long baby worm there. It's pretty pretty long juvenile, too. Oh, I thought I, I can't tell which side had the fruit on it. Oh, it must have been this side. <laughs> they look almost identical. But there was a little difference. So they nibbled this thing clean in 12 days. Not bad, right? I think there was another piece like that. We'll probably find only the skin. And that stuff's pretty tough, you know. So it makes sense that it's taken them a little bit more time to get through that. Hmm. Alright. I thought by seeing the stuff that we had in here, it would come back to me. But what else we fed... I think those cabbage leaves that we fed are probably nowhere to be seen after 12 days. I kind of expected with the cantaloupe rinds to find what we're seeing here. This piece actually has a good bit of melon on it still, right here. So this is not like a little sheet of paper like the other one was. This one actually has some of the fruit stuck to it still. Maybe it was um, resting up against something or making it more difficult to be approached just seems weird that two almost identical pieces right next to each other would have such differing states of decay and breakdown. All right, well, it's not coming back to me what the other food item was. And even this is evading me. <laughs> oh, now I remember. <laughs> Do you remember? Were you here with me? And you know what gave it away? It was a scent, the citrusy scent. So I had a grapefruit, um, only half of a grapefruit uh, skin or what is it? Citrus peel. 
And I broke it into little pieces because it had been frozen, so it chipped into little pieces pretty easily, and I was able to drop it in here in little chunks. But I think I, that must have been the third one I encountered, and I was kept wondering, what the heck are these things? <laughs> they almost feel like potatoes, and they even look that way too a little bit, right? But um, too soft, definitely too soft to be a potato after that much time. Kind of cool to see how it's breaking down. All right, we've um, opened up a pretty good size hole here. So we're going to apply today's feeding, which, well... I guess is um as nice and varied as the last feeding was with all those interesting foods in it. I think today they're going to get a semi boring, <laughs> semi colorless feeding, and you know what? We're going to take this. Uh, you know what? This is what they're going to get. We're going to take all these top coverings, not only the feeding zone indicator that had been showing us where we last fed, but we're going to finally um give that top covering newspaper its promotion. <laughs> out of top covering land into being part of the feeding zone now and I just know exactly where to go to find a nice new piece of newspaper that we can use to replace it with how does that sound I got some worms tacked onto this newspaper here good thing that the food that I'm giving them today is not frozen otherwise I'd feel a little bit bad but I don't feel I don't feel that bad I don't think the worms were harmed when I put freezing foods in there for them let's start getting their food in here one thing I like to do a little bit of a I don't know personal preference is to take some of my pre-made bedding before I drop in the coffee so that I have the I don't know something for the coffee to sort of blend with you know and you know what let's not be so mean and give them such a boring meal why don't we also include some of my new worm chow that sounds like a perfect idea that'll be even more incentive for them to come for them the coffee i don't know why i've just got this sort of thing about coffee it makes me think that the maybe because it's i'm constantly feeding it to them maybe that's the reason i sort of see it in my eyes at least as sort of a boring food like ho home coffee again right so <laughs> who knows maybe they love it but i always feel like i want to somehow help it along because it just seems like such a un i don't know what is it uninteresting food <laughs> food item so Let's just give them another handful, because we've got yet another, oops, filter's worth here to drop in. And we only need one of those filters, right, to serve as feeding zone indicator. So one of them we'll just uh, include with the feeding, try to reduce its particle size something a little smaller help with the breakdown process and um, I don't know I got what else do I have over here we don't have to go overboard I think this should be okay then here for um, a little while longer there were leftover bits of um, citrus peel that we observed in here from the last feeding there was that one part of um, the cantaloupe that was still looking pretty much like it had you know a bunch of food remaining on it so I think we've given them a, a properly sized meal here to go hand in hand with what leftovers they've still got from the previous feeding and um, I think we can cover up so this will be a good excuse for us to kind of go even further than just grabbing enough to cover up with but we'll go right out to the edge too to give ourselves a little peek over there holy cow look at the size of that worm in the corner <laughs> He's like king of the hill. He went and claimed the corner as his own. And he's like scaring all the little worms away, saying, get out of here, it's my place. Holy camoly. I always see people grabbing their worms because their worms are so huge and long and everything like that. And I think these this is kind of like what the worms looked like when I first received them from, uh, from Northeast Worms. But I think just by, you know, having them sort of cooped up in these little small containers that I run my systems in. The worms that would probably otherwise be growing much larger are actually remaining kind of puny. And what else do we have here? Oh, more leftover food. So yeah, that just further, oops, <laughs> confirms that we're in good shape when it comes to the food in here for them. Yeah, if we come back in a similar interval of another 12 days or so, then... Um, 
you know, I think we'll still probably see some leftovers. We won't see any coffee because that stuff all blends in. The worm chow, all that stuff is pretty much invisible. It already is invisible. I don't think we'd be able to find it. <laughs> it just blends right in. But who knows, maybe we'll even see a little bit of a cavity because at the same time while they're coming in to eat that worm chow, they're also nibbling on the, on the fresh uh, bedding you gave them. These, these worms might even favor the bedding over the kitchen scraps type <laughs> nitrogen rich foods. They really do seem to like their carbon rich bedding type materials that they just burn right through. I mean, look at the material down on this side here. It's so rich in castings. And for whatever reason, I guess they're just maybe going there for... Maybe there's like more collected moisture there or something. I always wonder. Because we went down into where the feeding had been placed last time. And we saw some worms. But it always seems like you find more on, out on the outer edges. A little bit unusual. Alright, let me think. What Have we, um... You know what? As usual, I forgot to do something that I had hoped to do. <laughs> Which was to incorporate a little bit of grit in this feeding too. But it doesn't have to be like right there next to the food. I guess we can administer it to them. Just across the top surface here. They can come up and grab at it if they need it or want it. And to replace the one that we promoted earlier. Here comes a nice new feeding zone indicator. So that looks pretty cool. I like the way the system's coming along. Yeah, these African night crawlers, they really seem to go right through all that shredded paper and leafy material that I've been using in my systems. This thing's only like two months old, a little bit over two months old, but it does just somehow seem like it's making very nice progress. I hope you agree, <laughs> and I think you will. I don't know, we'll see. I'll check the comments after um, after this thing goes online, but I think we're done here. I got a little bit of cleaning up and some stuff to put away, but I'm not going to waste your time with that. That stuff's boring, but before I go, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye now.